Hey, Better Sax players. Last week, I made a video about my easy and affordable setup for recording saxophone for making Instagram videos. And a lot of people ask me how to do the same thing, record an instrument, but over the top of a backing track. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over my entire process for combining audio and video together. Hey, Jay Metcalf here. If you like tutorial videos like this one, be sure to drop me a thumbs up right now and make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I do a lot of these. Recording good quality audio is easier, more affordable, and more accessible than ever before. I've been making multi-track audio recordings since the 1980s when we had uh, four-track cassette recorders. Nowadays, if you have a smartphone, you basically have a full recording studio in your pocket and you can make recordings using numerous free apps. It gets more complicated though when you want to produce videos that have multiple audio tracks so you can record yourself playing over a backing track or collaborating with other musicians. The first thing you need to know is you're gonna need two separate devices, one to record the video with and another one for the audio. Now, for most people, the best video camera you have is probably your phone. So you're gonna need something else to listen back and record the audio with. I'm gonna be using my computer, but I could also use uh, my tablet or even another phone. Use what you got. Now you could just play the backing track using your external speakers and record yourself playing over that. But the problem with this solution is that you have very little control over the mix, how much of your sound is heard versus how much of the backing track is heard since now they're gonna be combined on one inseparable audio track. So to do this right, we're gonna need some headphones because we want our audio to be a completely separate from the backing track. We're also gonna need two different apps, one for editing the video and another one for editing the audio. Now I use Logic and uh, Final Cut on my Mac. Those are professional programs that cost hundreds of dollars. If you have a Mac, you can use GarageBand and iMovie, both of which are free. But really any basic audio editing and video editing software is gonna get the job done for us here and there are plenty of free ones available. Please comment below with any apps, software, hardware that you use to produce content since a lot of people watching are gonna have questions. I'm gonna be showing you my workflow using my apps, but the concepts are the same no matter what software you're using. I'm gonna be recording a sax solo for a collaboration with some friends. They've all recorded their parts already and sent me the audio file. Step one is to load your backing track into the DAW, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation. In other words, your audio editing software. Now that I've got that loaded into the DAW, I've got to create a new separate track where I'm gonna record my saxophone. Now, since I'm only recording a solo, I'm gonna start recording a couple bars before I need to start playing. No need to listen to the entire song from the beginning. Depending on your software, you can also get set things up to record multiple takes over a set portion of the project. So here, I've selected the solo section, and when I'm recording, this will loop, creating a new take each time. This way, I don't have to press any buttons to stop and start recording in case I don't get a perfect take the first time, which happens almost never. Step two is to put on the headphones, turn off your speakers, and record video and audio at the same time. Don't forget to press record on both devices. Believe me, I've forgotten to do this a few times. You're gonna be listening to the backing track audio in the headphones, and depending on your setup, you can also be monitoring the audio your microphone is picking up. Now here's a time-saving tip for you. Once you press record on your camera, just let it go. You can record as many audio takes as you want. I do this until I get a good take that I'm happy with, and then I press stop on both the camera and the audio. I know the last take is the good one, so there's no need to go searching through all the different things that I've recorded to find the best one. Now, 
Now we have to sync our audio and video together in the video editing software. So first we will export the audio file and get our video file off of the camera. Here's another time saving tip. Create a new folder on your computer that contains all of the media for the project. You definitely want everything to be in the same place. In our DAW, we have a project with two audio tracks now. One is the backing track and the other is what we just recorded. I'm going to export these as one audio file, but before I do that, I might want to do a little bit of editing. I usually add some gentle compression and reverb and then adjust the level until it sounds about right. I do a lot of these recordings and save time by applying the same saved settings to my audio tracks. Once you get your saxophone sound the way you want it, save those settings so next time you can spend more time focusing on the music and less on being a recording engineer. Now in the video editor, I'm going to combine the exported audio track with the video I recorded. In Final Cut, this is extremely easy. The camera I recorded with has an audio track of me playing, which sounds like this. Not very good, right? Doesn't matter. The software uses that audio to figure out how to sync the clips together. I just select the audio and video and click sync clips and then it's done. Even though my audio also has the backing track in there, the software can figure it out and it will even delete the camera's audio file for me since we no longer need that. The last step is to export our video project to a file that we can share somewhere. Once I do this, I can upload it to Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Now, learning to use all of this software and hardware took me a long time. But guess what? I learned it all by watching YouTube videos and practicing a lot. I'll link to all the gear that I use most in the description below. Believe me, there are lots of cheaper alternatives to those things. It's not so important how much you spend. It's much more important how you use the gear. Thanks for watching. Now go make some amazing videos playing the saxophone.